want to give a quick tour of the different types of knives, different types of steel, and some of the effects that you can get on Japanese knives that differ to what we used to on a Western one. Cover the handles and stuff elsewhere. This is just about the blades. So we've got this one here. This is powder steel. Uh, this is R2. Um, this one's very plain, very smooth. The workmanship in this one, this is made by uh, one of the best sharpeners in Japan, if not the world. This is his baby, this is his flagship product. He puts a lot of time into the grind on this one to get this one pretty fabulous. It's ground all the way down and then he puts a very fine grind on the very end. A lot of work goes into that one, just grinding that one. And that's why it looks very plain, very nice. It's beautiful. That's an ironclad from Kotetsu. Then we've got this one. This is the Moonlit Waves. It's what we'll probably called a factory made one. Um, this one is fabulous. It's uh, still some handmade uh, processing goes through this, obviously. Uh, it comes with a Western handle. It's one of the most popular ones because of the Western handle. Some people are put off by the, the Japanese handle, but this is the one that a lot of people like for that reason. Uh, this one's multi-layered, so it's got what we call a Damascus finish. Uh, multiple layers of the stainless steel on the side. Then you've got the cutting steel in the middle there. And again, this one features a hammered finish uh, on the top half as well. So it's kind of like a mixture of everything going on on this one. Those little dimples there, that's exactly where a hammer's gone. And those dimples, they're called little air pockets when you're cutting. It's meant to make the knife cut through uh, your meat or whatever else you're cutting through. It cuts through a little bit easier. It causes little air bubbles when you're cutting through. In theory, it's meant to fall off nicer. So it's actually a purpose as well looking pretty. This one, this is uh, VG10. That's the steel that's in this one. Uh, it's a really good knife steel. Uh, not a high carbon content though. Uh, it will not rust. Uh, some people say it will, not, it will, but it won't. And again, this is all layered up to give it this beautiful finish. What I particularly like about this one is you've got this hammered finish again, but this is smooth. There's no dimples in this one. But again, you can see where the hammer's gone to mash all those different layers and squash them all together. If you imagine a multi-layered sandwich and someone's jammed their fingers into it to mix all the different layers up and then rolled it out smooth again, it's kind of like that. You've got these different little craters where everything's gone. And again, they've ground, then ground through there to expose all these different layers, and then dip it in etching acid, and that's what brings out all these beautiful colors. It's a real good knife to look at. This is the Denka. Uh, this is our most expensive knife, it's our flagship knife. Uh, this is made for a very, very experienced blacksmith indeed. And again, he's hammered this as well. It's also laminated, you can just see the wibbly wobbly line there with the cutting edge steel in the middle, as it's been exposed. They've just ground this bit. This is all hammered as it would be when it came out of the forge. Then they grind through to expose it, so that's why that bit's silver, you get this different two-tone effect going on. Uh, and again, you can see where the dimples are, that's where the grinding's gone, and it's left a little, little mark there. So you've got this uh, dimpling on the side, uh, and then you, again, you've got this exposed, uh, beautiful cutting edge on there. That one's made of super blue steel. Uh, it's one of the best steels you can get, high carbon. That one will patterner along the edge. You've got this slight discoloration where the exposed steel is, but it's a fabulous, fabulous knife.